This video will go over how to factor trinomials. And the trinomials we're going to focus on in this video will have a coefficient, a leading coefficient of 1. So in front of your um, the highest degree, so in this case this one is a 2, this is the highest exponent. In front of the highest exponent, the coefficient, there will be no number there, it will be a 1. So that's what this video will go over. So let's take a look at our first example here. So again, we know we use this method because there is three terms and there is essentially a one there. So when we have this situation, the first thing we always do is check if there is a GCF. So we're going to ask ourselves, is there anything that goes into 1, 18, and 32? So there is not. So we will skip this step. Then the next step is we are going to multiply, or we're going to take our C value, and this is A, because it has the highest exponent. This is B. It's the one in front of the, the X term. And then this is C. So we're going to take our C term, which is the constant, which is 32. And we're going to write down 32, the factors of 32. So, for example, 1 times 32 is 32. 2 times 16 is 32. 4 times 8 is 32. So we write down all our factors. So that is this part. Then we have to pick which ones would add to the B value. So the B value is this 18 here. So we need to pick the combination here that will add to 18. So if we pick the 2 and the 16, they would add to 6 to 18 and they multiply to 32. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put an X like it shows here. We're going to put an X at the beginning of the parenthesis and then we're going to insert our numbers that we found. So we're going to put positive 2, and it doesn't matter if I put the positive 2 here or put the positive 2 here, it doesn't matter. And then the, our other number is 16. And that is how we factor a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. Now, let's see, does this really work? So this is our answer here, and I want to prove that this is the correct answer. So if we want to check it, then we should be able to multiply this out. So x times x is x squared. x times 16 is 16x. And 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 16 is positive 32. Then we're going to combine these like terms right here. And you can see that it does work, this method. We do get what we started with here. So this is the correct factored form. And remember, again, factoring just means that we're taking a polynomial and writing it as a product. All right, let's take a look at another example here. So the first step is ask ourselves, is there anything that divides into 2, 20, and 150? Well, all three of those are even. So I know that 2 can go into all of them. And then I see that they all have x's. So I take the one with the smaller exponent, which is this one, and I can factor out a 2x. So that is the first step here. We are looking for a GCF. So I know that... 2x times x squared would get me this. And then I know that 2x times negative 10x, if I multiply these together, I would get the negative 20x squared. And then 2 times negative 75 would get me this term. Okay, so now our next step is we are going to think of two numbers that multiply to C. So remember, this is A, 
this is B, and this is C. So our C value is negative 75 right here. So we need to think of factors of 75. So I make a list of factors of 75. I'm going to ignore this negative here for a second here. And I have to, after I have a list, list out as many as I can, I need to think of which ones will also add to negative 10x. So they have to multiply to negative 75 and add to negative 10. So what I'm doing now is I'm playing around with these numbers here and thinking of all the different possible combinations. And if I made this negative 15 and this positive 5, then positive 5 minus 15 would equal the negative 10. So these two here, if I did 5 plus a negative 15, it would be negative 10. So this would be the combination I'm looking for. Now this 2x is not going anywhere. It's going to stay there. And then we're going to put the x's. So we just found our numbers, and now we're over here. We're putting our x's in the parentheses. And then the numbers we found were positive 5, so I'm going to have positive 5 in one of the parentheses, and then we have a negative 15 in the other parentheses. And this is our factored form. Okay, so let's take a look at it, this example here. So first of all, we need to look for a GCF, and there's nothing that goes into all three of these terms. So now we are going to think of numbers that multiply to C. So this is A, B, and C. So we're going to make our list. And some of you may at some point not need this list here and, and write it all out. You might be able to identify the number combinations we need right away. So for right now when we're learning, we're going to write it out. And we have to pick the numbers that will multiply to negative 18, but they have to add to negative 3. So we need to play around with our negatives and we have to think about that they have to multiply to a negative. And for us to multiply to a negative, one should be negative and one should be positive. So if we made, and, the, and they have to add a negative 3, so we know that the bigger number, because this is negative, must be negative. So if this was positive 3 and this was negative 6, these two here would make negative 3x and they multiply to negative 18. So we're going to put our x's in the front, just like it says here, and then we're going to insert the numbers we got. So we got positive 3 and negative 6, and that is our factored form. Okay, let's take a look at this example. So we're going to check if there's a GCF. There's nothing that goes into all of them. So then we need to think of numbers that multiply to C, so this is C, and they have to add to this, to B, which is negative 1. Okay, so here's our factors of some factors for 42, and they have to add together, combine together to make our B value, which is negative 1. So since they have to add together to make a negative, I know that the bigger number automatically has to be negative. So if we have positive 6 and we have a negative 7, I know that together these will make the negative 1. So we put the x's in the front of our parentheses. Now that we've done this part, we do this. And then we plug in our parentheses the positive 6 and the negative 7. And then we have our factored form. Okay, so first step is to ask ourselves, is there a GCF? So I know that there is a number that goes into all three of these, which is 3. So that's going to come out in front. And then also we talked about in this class that if the leading coefficient, so this is the highest exponent, if this is negative, we're going to also make this negative. And then if, as we look, they all don't have A's in our terms, so that is our GCF. We're just going to pull out a negative 3. So negative 3 times A squared will get us this, and negative 3 times negative 5A will get us this, and negative 3 times positive 6 
would get us this. So now that negative 3 is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay in our answer. So i got to remember that in the end I need to have that negative 3 there. And then I'm going to take my C term and think of the factors of C. So factors of 6. So I'm going to list out my factors of 6, which there's not that many for 6 because it's a small number. So if they have to multiply to make a positive 6, and they have to add, combine together, to make a negative 5, which is our B term. So for them to add to a negative 5, I know that the bigger number has to be negative, since this is negative. But because they have to multiply to make 6, I know they have to both have the same sign. So that they can multiply to 6, but they have to combine to make negative 5. So if both of these numbers are negative, then negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5, and negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. So these two numbers are numbers that we need. So we're going to put in our parentheses a negative 2 and a negative 3. And there we go, we have it factored. Okay, our next example here, it has no GCF, so we take our C term, and those are the only factors for 5, but they have to add to make the B value, which is negative 9. So there is no way to add 1 and 5 and get 9. So what that's called is this is not factorable. We call the polynomial prime, it cannot be factored. Alright, so if we look at this next example here, it looks a little bit different, but it's going to, we're going to use the same process here. So first of all, look to see if there's a GCF, so there's nothing that can go into 1, negative 33, and 32. There's nothing. They all don't have x's, and they all don't have y's. So this does, there is no GCF to factor out. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put our parentheses here. And we know to put an x here and an x here because we're going to get the x squared that way. And then we're going to ignore this xy stuff here. And we're going to think of what numbers multiply to c, which is 32 but add to b, which is negative 33. So we're going to make our a list of factors. And I know that they have to add a negative 33, but they have to multiply to a positive. So they have to have the same signs. So I know that both of these are going to have to be negative. So I know that if I add negative 1 plus negative 32, that would make this term right here, the negative 33. So I know that my numbers are negative 1 and negative 32. But there's no way to get the y. The y is right here. So to get y squared, I'm going to need to have this be y and this be y. And I don't need to have this 1 there. It's optional. It's better without. So that would be my factored form. So now let's say we want to check this because, again, it has this xy thing. We want to know, does this really work? If I factor this out, will I get this xy term? So let's check. So if we multiply this out to check it, x times x is x squared. x times negative 32y is negative 32xy. And then negative y times x, so negative y times x, a negative times a positive is a negative, and then we would just have xy. And then negative y times negative 32y would make a positive, because a negative times a negative is a positive, 32y squared. Then we're going to combine the like terms, and we can combine these together because they're both xy's. And as you can see, this does give us our original problem. 
All right, let's try one last one here. So we look at this. It's a trinomial. We first ask ourselves, is there anything in common, which there isn't. So if there isn't, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So C is negative 30. So we, couldn't, we didn't have a GCF, so then we're going to think of numbers that multiply to get us negative 30 here. And they have to add to make a positive 1, because that's our B coefficient there. So we also have 5 times 6 here, so they have to add to make 1. But they have to multiply to make a negative. So since they multiply to make a negative, I know one of them has to be negative. But since this is positive, I know that the bigger number has to be positive. So these numbers would work. Negative 5 plus 6 is positive 1, and they multiply to negative 30. So here, though, I'm going to have to make this an x cubed here and an x cubed here. And the reason why it has to be an x cubed is because it has to multiply to make x to the 6th. And I know that when I distribute these here, that x cubed times x cubed is x to the 6th. So that's why I'm not putting just an x here and an x here. They have to be cubed because of this here. And then I'm going to put my number in, negative 5 and positive 6. And now this is completely factored.